In this video, we're going to look at how you can add last refresh dates within your Power BI reports. We're going to go through the basic steps of how you can add last refresh dates. We're going to look at how you deal with the refresh dates in different time zones, as well as how to handle things like when the clocks move forwards or backwards. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So adding a last refresh date somewhere within your report page is a pretty typical way to give your users some insights on how fresh the data in your page is. And it's a useful information for your users as well as for yourself if you have a report that is refreshing regularly. So let me show you how you can easily do this in Power BI. So what you need to do in Power BI, first of all, is you need to find what the current date or time is. And there are two ways that you can do this. The first thing is through DAX. So here I created a simple and empty report. And what I'm going to do is going to click new measure here. And we're going to say uh, today DAX. And we're going to use the function today. Now there are two functions that you can use here today and UTC day today just simply gets the local date and time based on where I am locally and UTC is basically the time zone and uh, is zero and uh, just keep that in mind because we're going to go back to that uh, later. So for now we're going to get today and it creates us a DAX measure here, which if we drag into our page here and create a card, what you will see is it will just simply give me the date today, which is the 15th of April. Now, if you want to get the time as well, you can use the counterpart now function. So you have now and UTC now, which uh, the nows will also add the date as well as the time within your measure. So what you can see, is now if I save this and uh, I hit uh, refresh, for example, you will see that uh, those numbers will change because as the time passes, the, the time also changes here in our page. Now, watch what happens. Um, it's 1840 and 39 here in our time here. And watch what happens when I reopen this report. So I'll hit save. And I'm going to reopen that uh, Power BI report again just to show you what happens. So what you'll see is now that this DAX function, even though the data that we have, theoretical data that we have in this report hasn't really changed or updated, the time or the calculation has updated to get the current date and time, which um, in the last refresh dates context, you probably don't want to have because you want to only show the date and time when that data was last refreshed. So using DAX for last refresh date is uh, not a good idea. It's a good idea if you want to calculate based on the current date and time. But if you want to monitor the last refresh date, you want to use and find what the date and time is in Power Query. Let's go and create this in Power Query. So I'm going to open a Power Query by hitting transform data right here. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to click new source and I'm going to open a blank query. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type dates time dot local now, which simply returns us the current date and time right now. So you can see that it's it's just returned as a value here. And let's convert this into a table. I'm going to name this date and I'm going to name this one last refresh. I'm going to convert this into a date time column. And that's pretty much how you update this or you create this last refresh date in Power Query. So how would you use this in your page? So if we hit close and apply now, you saw the first way that you can add this into your report, which is by adding it into a card. But what I prefer to do is add it actually as text, as a dynamic text, just because I have more formatting options when it comes to adding texts before or after it. So if I delete this one, for example, I'm going to go insert text box and I'm going to drag this text box to the right here. And I'm going to type last refresh date. And then from here, I'm going to click value here and I'm going to get last refresh date from, from our column here. Okay, let's try again. Max of last refresh. Sometimes it takes a while for it to, to render. So if I just 
do it like that. Max of last refresh. Yeah. If I hit OK, so you'll see that it gives me both the date and the time of the last refresh from our table. Now, if I hit refresh now in this data set, you'll see that that number updates. But if I save this and reopen the file, that number or that last refresh date will not change, um, which is what we expect because we don't really want this to update unless the report is refreshed. So within Power BI Desktop, everything seems straightforward. When you use DateTime Local Now, it just gets the dates of your local machine and plugs it into your report page. Now, this might not be the case if you're using the Power BI service, and that's because your tenant's geography might be different based on how it's uh, configured. So you might be living in the UK, but your tenant might be situated in the US, which is in a different time zone. So what would typically happen, and it doesn't happen to me because my tenant is in the same region as I am, uh, what will happen typically with the last refresh date is in Power BI Desktop, you will have the date, your current date and time. But when you refresh that same data sets in the service, when you publish your report, you will have a different time. And that's because the function date time local now gets the current date based on the geography where this data is stored at. So how would you know which um, geography your tenant is situated? So let me show you. I'm going to open up uh, the Power BI service here. From the Power BI service, you can hit the uh, help and support and under about Power BI, you can see where your data is stored. Now, if this is different to where your region is, you need to deal with the time zone to show the last refresh date based on your region that you're at, not where the data is stored. So I'm going to show you a trick of how you can do this um, in Power Query. So for this, um, let's pretend that we are in the Philippines and uh, our data is stored um, in the UK. And Philippines um, is UTC plus 8, um, which uh, is here um, at the moment. It's 1.46 a.m. there. And we want to make sure that our last refresh date always reflects the current local time, not the time in the Azure. So how do we deal with that? So uh, let's open up Power Query again here. And let's go back to the last refresh uh, table here. And the first thing that we can do is uh, first, let's duplicate this uh, dates table, uh, this date column, sorry. I'm going to name this date time zone, and I'm going to change this type into a date time time zone. And this is because we want to switch the, the offsets of the dates or the date and time to what the local time zone would be. So, and the first way to do it is by converting or creating a date time zone column type. So the next thing is I'm gonna create a new custom column here, and we're gonna use this function called date time zone dot switch zone, which accepts uh, two uh, values. So the first value is the date time zone data that we have. So it's the first, the, the column that we've just converted. And then the second parameter that it asks for is the time zone difference. So we want to make it so that it goes up by, by eight, which is what the uh, time zone is in the Philippines. And the other one I believe is optional. So we're going to just close it like this. And uh, I'm going to just say time in uh, Philippines like this. And if you hit OK, so you'll see that that time now corresponds to the local time in the Philippines. So you simply just convert that into a date time. And there you go. So that would be the same as what you get here when you which is the current time locally in the Philippines. So now that you know how you can easily switch your time zones uh, to different parts of the world. Now let's look at something a little bit more complicated. Not all of the countries do this, but basically the majority of the European countries move their clocks either forwards or backwards when the summertime finishes and when the summer times end. So in the UK, for example, during the summertime, which starts on the last Sunday of March, the clocks move forward. So where we typically will be UTC zero, it will be plus one. Whereas when we reach the last Sunday of October, the clock move backwards so it will go back to UTC zero and um, so we need to kind of account for this uh, difference to the conversion 
whenever the clocks move forward or backward. So how do we make sure that our calculation or our logic honors this uh, change in a difference in the offsets when the clocks move forward or backward? So let's do another scenario here. So let's say our local time zone is France, and which is at the moment it's uh, plus two because we are in summertime, but typically it will be a UTC plus one time zone. So we want to make sure that if it's at the moment, we are in 2023 so and we are within summertime so if it's after on or after the 26th of march the offset needs to be two but if it's beyond this if it's after or, or it's not within the summertime if it's after 29th of october it needs to be plus one which um, is a pretty simple thing to do um because considering you only need to make sure that the dynamic element updates the offsets from this function now what makes this a little bit extra complicated is that the date in which the time zone switch is based on the day of the week which is the last sunday as opposed to a specific number like a 15 or 29 as you can see here so it changes based on the, which where the sunday falls so we need to do this and break it down into several steps so you can understand how we go about fixing this. So let's start and let me just delete all of these steps for the Philippines because we don't really need those anymore. And so, so what we need to do first is we need to create uh, two columns to check and get first what the start and end of summertime is. So let's create a new custom column here, start of summertime. And in this custom formula, what we're going to do is uh, we're first going to try to get uh, what the date is. And I'm going to use a string literal here to say, uh, get me 2023. And then let's just do get me the 31st of March, which is the last day of, uh, of March, right? So if we hit OK, so it returns us the date as we expect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this with a date that starts of week, which gives us a different date based on uh, what date that we feed it in. And uh, it takes two arguments. The second argument is which day should it start. And we're going to give it Sunday as the starting date. So what it will do is it will take that last week of March because we set it as the 31st of March. And then it's going to try to get what the last Sunday is based on this function. So if I hit OK, um, let's see what I misspelled here. Perhaps this. Yeah, here we go. So it gives us the 29th of January, which I missed. Yeah, that's that's January. So I'm going to change that into March, which will give us the 26th of March, which is the same as when, uh, as we expect, this is the last Sunday of March. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to account for other dates apart from the current year. At the moment, we hard coded uh, 2023 here. But what happens when this report rolls over to 2024, for example? So we want to make sure that this is dynamic. So a simple way to fix that is we're going to replace 2023 with a year function. So dates dot year. And in here, we're going to just give it the date function. Oh, the date column, sorry. So now that is dynamic based on the current year that you're at. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to get the end of summertime, which is the last Sunday of October. So I'm going to copy the, uh, the code that we've just created. I'm going to create a new custom column. I'm going to paste that end of summertime. And we're going to change this to get the last day of October, which will give us the last Sunday of that month. And 29th of October is the same as what we have here. Perfect. So now we are ready to add our last conditional column. So uh, now we need to get the change the offset or get the offset based on which date we currently lie on. Are we within the summertime, which makes the offset plus two? If we are outside of summertime, it would just be plus one. So um, we're going to get the offset first. So France offset, we're going to say if the date is uh, greater than or equals to the start date and the date is less than or equals to the summer date. So if we are within the summertime, 
then two, else one. So um, let's see. Okay, I see. It's because we're um, comparing a date time value into a date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change this into a date type like this. And that should fix that because otherwise it's trying to compare two different data types. Um, so now it gives us two. And that's because we are currently in the 15th of April, which is within the summertime. So it needs to be a plus two. So now that we've done all this prep work, the last thing is now to just get the, the, the time zone in France. So France local time. We're going to use the same function like before. So dates uh, time zone dot switch zone. We're going to give it the date time zone column. And then we're going to give it the time zone in hours instead of writing two or one. We just get the data from the France offset column. If you hit OK, so you will see that now it gives us the current local date or time in uh, in France, which at the moment it doesn't really give us the time because we have we don't have date time here. So maybe what I will do is I will just change the date. I'm going to just convert everything to date time so that we can see the, the time values on all of these uh, columns. So here I'm going to change these into date time instead like this, which now, as you can see, this is the current local time in France. So if I just, let's just search that quickly just to make sure France time. It's 19.59, it's almost 8 p.m., which is, uh, there we go, it's, it's the same as what we have here. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with how you can use the last refresh time and how you can fix issues with it when you publish it in the Power BI service. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.